So recently I was playing around with making some pixel art, trying to see what Boris and Connie might look like in that sort of style. And then I got the sudden inspiration to create a Stardew Valley mod of them, because why not? I've never created a Stardew mod before, so what could possibly go wrong? Today, I'm going to be taking you guys through each step of creating this mod in hopes that it'll be useful for anyone else looking to make their own. This video focuses specifically on how to use Content Patcher for modding Stardew, as I don't really know enough about coding to create anything from scratch. To start, I went and installed the application Stardew XNB Hack, which can be found in the description below. This unpacks all of the XNB files within the content folder for Stardew Valley, turning them all into more usable formats which we can edit either with Notepad or our art program of choice, depending on the file type. Now, since we're using Content Patcher, we have to pick one of the many pre-existing NPCs to replace with the character that we want to add. I decided to go with Marnie and Jazz, they just seemed like the perfect pair to use for Boris and Connie. Although, by uh, replacing Marnie with Boris, Mayor Lewis inadvertently turns into a literal bear-loving gay man, but we can ignore that. I then went ahead and figured out the dimensions for the sprites, most of which turned out to be about 16 pixels by 26 pixels. Now, I know this is pixel art, but that is so small, and it was pretty difficult to work in this size. I began by drawing out the front-facing positions for Boris and Connie, essentially condensing the pixel art that I had already done so that it could fit the dimensions for the game. I would say that Boris was definitely the most difficult to translate into the Stardew sprite size. He's supposed to be very large, but I had to really squeeze him down to make things work. Connie was much easier, though she ended up being kind of a giant, but I suppose the kids in Stardew aren't actually that much smaller than the adults, so... Then I had to draw both of them from the side. For each angle, I did a basic standing pose so I could have a base to work with for all of the animations. Boris was slightly trickier since he has a patch on his left arm, making his sprite asymmetrical. Next, after figuring out both angles, I pasted my bases onto the original spreads and got to work on recreating all of Marnie and Jazz's sprites as Boris and Connie. Recreating the sprites was a lot easier than it initially seemed. It was mostly copying and pasting the bases, then manipulating them to fit the poses for each animation frame. It was slightly tedious, but fairly quick. I also made some variants for the winter season. For some reason, I couldn't get Boris to change his outfit in the winter, but I think that's just an issue with Content Patcher. Regardless, he's still very cute. After working on all the sprites, I drew the portraits. These were definitely a lot easier to do since they were much larger and therefore I was able to include more detail. For the portraits, I referenced the expression sheets that I did of Boris and Connie for my portfolio. I'm really glad that I had these done beforehand as they made it a lot easier to do each expression in the portraits. It was a lot of fun translating them into pixel art. I think this style really suits these guys. Once all the art was finished, I moved on to the stuff that would actually make the mod work. The coding. Or kind of coding. This was definitely the trickiest part of the whole mod creation, as there was surprisingly very little information to actually go off of. Like, I struggled to simply find out how to change Marty's gender to male for this mod even though I know stuff like that has been done a countless number of times. But this is exactly why I'm making this video. Even if there might still be some things I need to fix, I'm sure someone will find at least some of this information useful. To start, I created a folder for my mod, then a folder within it called Assets, which is where all of my images would go. 
I then created two JSON files in Notepad, one called Content and one called Manifest. The Content JSON contains the actual mod coding, while the Manifest contains basic information about the mod, such as the name and description. I'll leave templates for both in the description below. Here in the Manifest file, we have the mod's name, my name, the mod's version, its description, its ID, a section for update keys, which I left blank, and the ID for a content patcher. All pretty easy stuff to fill out. After this comes the hard part, the content file. As I mentioned previously, I struggled a bit with this part as there's quite a small amount of information to actually go off of, despite there being hundreds of mods that do essentially the same thing as the one that I'm making in this video. I actually had to consult one of my friends to proofread my code, as it wouldn't work at one point. Keeping track of the commas and brackets is very important. In order to check if your code is working or not, there's a really handy website you can consult instead of having to boot up Stardew again and again. Just go to smappy.io slash json slash content dash patcher and upload your content file, then hit save and validate file, and it'll tell you where there's an error. The only issue that I found with this site is that it doesn't actually tell you what the issue is with the code, only that there is a problem on a specific line. I suppose this might just be a thing with any site like this, but it certainly wasn't as useful as I'd hoped, considering I'm very much a beginner at this. But it's still helpful regardless to find out which lines might be causing any trouble. And as I said before, there will usually be an issue with commas or brackets, so keep an eye out for that. Now, to start this file, after placing your first squiggly bracket, you need to signify the version of Content Patcher that your mod will be using which will likely be the most recent version. As of making this video, the most recent version is 2.3.0, so that's what I've written down under format. Following the format line, we need to make a changes line, then add a square and a squiggly bracket to let the content patcher know what's being included within this section. Do I know why we need these different brackets in this order? Nope. But I do know that they get things to work. Next, we add three different lines, action, target, and entries. The action line tells Content Patcher what it's supposed to do with the information you give it. The target is the source file that you are editing. And entries is what the target is being replaced with. From what I found, anything that's not related to images has edit data under its action. Then, under target, I've written strings slash NPC names. This is where I found all of the names for the NPCs to be stored. Though I don't actually know if changing it does anything, there's another target under data slash characters that has information for each character's display name, so I'm not sure which one is actually better to change. I just decided to change them both, just in case. For the string slash NPC names entry, I copied and pasted the names of the characters I wanted to change, then replaced the second instance of each name with my characters' names. For the data slash characters entry, I copied and pasted whatever information I needed for each character. In Marnie's case, I have her display name, which I changed to Boris, and her gender, which I changed to male. I mentioned earlier that I had trouble with finding out how to change the gender of a character, as there was no information about this topic at all online. Fortunately, it was as simple as writing male under gender, which I found in the character's file. Next, I went ahead and edited some dialogue. I found that in the original text, Jazz referred to Marnie as Aunt Marnie, so I wanted to make sure that I got rid of any instance of the word aunt when she spoke. So after adding the three action, target, and entries lines, I told it to edit the data under characters slash dialogue slash jazz. 
then copied and pasted every line of dialogue from Jazz that mentioned Marnie. Something really important to keep in mind here is that if you have multiple lines of dialogue to change within the same source file, you should always, always, always include a comma at the end. This is so that way it knows that each line of dialogue is included with this single action, and if you don't have the commas, it thinks that each line is a new command, which it can't read. The final line of dialogue does not need a comma. Instead, you have to close it off with a squiggly bracket, and then another squiggly bracket to close the entire group of information. The second bracket is followed by a comma, letting Content Patcher know that you have another action that you want to add. Finally, it's time to change all of the images. For this action, we can write either load or edit image. I'm not sure if it really matters which one you write down. I decided to write load for any sprite replacements and edit image for any portrait replacements. Then under target, we have the folder name, which will either be characters or portraits. And then follow this with a slash and whatever the image is that you want to replace. In this case, we have characters slash jazz. For her winter outfit, we would have characters slash jazz underscore winter. Finally, for the third line, instead of entries, we have from file. This is where you write the location of the image that you want to see in the game. In this case, all of my images are within the assets folder that I created earlier, so I wrote assets slash Connie underscore sprites dot PNG. Once we've included all the information we wanted, it's time to close off all of our brackets. After checking to make sure that the code works, we can finally boot up the game and see our newly added characters. I think they turn out super cute. If you'd like to check them out yourself, I've uploaded my mod to Nexus so you can download it. I know this video was definitely different from my normal stuff since half of it wasn't really art related, but my main goal was to finally get a lot of this information out there in an easy to access way so that others won't have to struggle with it quite as much as I did. If you found this video useful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications on so you can catch any of my future uploads. Also, I'd love to hear about any mods that you've made or any ideas you might have, so feel free to leave those in the comments below. Thanks for watching!